I'm Mr. B, and today we're talking about testing our coolant, okay? So I have this 2017 Volkswagen Jetta GLI in. It's my personal vehicle, and it's getting a little chilly outside, so I want to go ahead and make sure that the coolant is going to be able to handle the colder temperatures that happen to be happening right now in my area. So especially if you live up north, you know, I live down south, it's not really too big of a deal for us, but if you live up north, you really need to do this before it starts getting cold. So it's really easy. The testers that they sell for this are fairly inexpensive. I think uh, even the professional grade testers that I have are under $20 a piece. So you're gonna need to go by and get either the floating ball or the floating arrow tester. And I'm about to show you the difference between the two over here. And it takes about five minutes to do. The cool thing about the tester is it's reusable. You can use it on multiple cars, multiple types of coolant. It works pretty much everywhere and on everything. Now, I also have a video, matter of fact, I just got done shooting it, on checking your coolant using a multimeter and trying to see you know, how much galvanic uh, reaction that you have in your coolant. So if you're interested in that video, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, link above me here so you can click on that because Really, you need to do both tests. You need to check and see the specific gravity and you need to see if you have any voltage generating in your coolant. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take you guys over here to the bench and show you the two testers. And then of course, it's really easy. If you can base the turkey, you can do this test. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, these are the two types of testers that I have. They make some a little bit smaller, but these are more professional grade testers, so they're a little bit bigger, but they make some that just slide into your pocket. Uh, and this, what these testers do is they test the specific gravity of the coolant. In other words, how thick or thin it is. So this is a kind of an old school tester. It has these little discs that will float, and the more discs that float, the better the coolant is at resisting the freezing. So what you'll do is you'll just put this in your coolant bottle. Of course, you do this while the car's cold. And it's just like a turkey. You just squeeze this, just like you're basting a turkey or something, and it will suck some of the coolant up in there, and it will float those up, and you can tell which ones. Uh, it has a scale here, and it'll, it'll say what your protection is. Now, we also have this what we call a fast test, and this is kind of the industry standard right now. And you have a scale. It's in... Fahrenheit, of course, and Celsius for our fellows across the way. And uh, it has, you have to hold it level. So you have your level indicator right here. And that is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good tester. This is the one I really prefer versus the one with the, the floating discs or the floating balls. So let's go ahead and get on the hood and I'll show you how these work. Okay, got the hood popped and now we're gonna take our floating tester here. We're going to squeeze all the air out of it and we are going to fill it up with coolant. It looks like we got, oh, it's almost going. That's okay. So we got probably four and a half. So that's showing the four is negative 26 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 32 degrees on Celsius. And if it was five, it's negative 50 or negative 46. So that's pretty good for what we got here in the, in the south of the United States. So pretty good, um, but you will find that this car did fail the other coolant test that I did in the previous video. So uh, this just goes to show that you need to do both tests. So what I'll do is just shake all this stuff out and then let's see if the other meter agrees. So we have our fast tester here. And again, I'm just going to collect some coolant. And that is saying about negative 10 to negative 23 right here on this scale. The, the arrow's right here, it's very hard to see. So yeah, there's a lot of differences. I actually trust this one a lot and I trust my, my meter. So negative 10 and that one's saying what, almost negative 40, negative 50 in some areas. 
So quite a bit of difference in the two testers, and I tend to trust this and the meter. The other tester that I did with the floating discs is a little bit older. It's probably about 10, 15 years old, so uh, I, I don't know if I would trust that. So I just wanted to show you kind of how they work, though, and how different some of the, the readings that you can get. So definitely uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this out because it did fail the galvanic test. It was putting almost uh, two-tenths of a volt out, which we'll discuss in a different video. So, uh, and when I flush this coolant out, I'm gonna make a video on that and I'll also put it above uh, this part of the video as well so you can click on that. But it's probably gonna be a couple of weeks before I'm able to flush this because we're about to go on Christmas break here at the shop. So, okay, so thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Please let me know in the comments what tester you're planning on getting and let me know what testing uh, method you're using and what results that you're getting from those tests. And uh, remember that just, you know, just a little bit bad uh, coolant can cause a whole lot of issues in your coolant system. It can cause uh, deterioration, overheating, freezing, uh, a lot of different things. So make sure that your coolant is good. And as always, I want to give you a warning, don't mix coolants, okay? Um, so I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, VK, uh, a lot of other different areas too. I'm going to get them all together one day. But also we are launching our podcast tomorrow. And it's Autocorrect with Mr. B Podcast. We talk about a variety of things there, everything from automotive recalls to car industry, even to the politics of the car industry. And I hope y'all all listen to my podcast and let me know what you think about that as well. So for now, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.